I got to start turning some heat on in here. <laughs> it's all good. We all getting started, baby. It's the first start. <laughs> Hi, John. How are you? What's up? All right. First question, Kelly Eco. Hey, John. Welcome to Houston. Mm. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Sir, um, you know, having not played in almost two years, how do you feel currently and how was the first practice for you? Um, I feel great, man. I mean, the last two years I've dedicated myself to uh, trying to get my body in the best position I can to uh, have a heck of a comeback and finish my career off whenever I decide to do that at the best of my ability. So, um, man, the first practice is great, man. I mean, just doing my job is trying to be a leader, um, be the point guard on the floor, tell guys where to be, things I see. Um, it's all a new adjustment for me, the whole coaching, most of the coaching staff and myself and a lot of new guys we brought in. Always just trying to fit in and figure out how to make this team the best we can be to go out there and compete at a high level every night. And uh, we're going to make a lot of mistakes early on, but that's what this practice is for, training camp for, and that's what a couple of the preseason games are going to be for. Mark Berman. Hi, John. Have you had a chance to attempt to reach out or talk to James Harden since you were uh, traded here? Oh, yeah. I mean, James had a great talk since I've been traded here. And, um, I mean, we, we've been friends way before this. And, you know, through what was, what's going on right now, you know, I mean, it's because of the testing protocol and things like that. Um, we're going to figure out what's the best decision when you want to get here and be here. And uh, we've been on the same page since I've been traded here. Tim McMahon. You know, I'm following up on that. Um, what, what is your read, having talked to James, about his, you know, his, uh, his stand with the Rockets? You know, does he want to be in Houston? Uh, do you envision him? Uh, being a rocket this season, for sure. That was the main reason why. You know, I mean, talking through the whole process of what was going to happen with this trade if it happened or did not happen, uh, is one of the reasons that we wanted to play together. So I have high ability and 100 percent effort that he wants to be and be a part of his organization and see what happens with this team and see where we can go. Adam Spolin. Uh, John Demarcus the other day talked about how you two have kind of been dreaming and planning out ways to be able to play with each other again. What's it like to now be able to share a locker room with him? Um, it was dope, man. My first, um, I got here Thursday and I did all these physical and tests and I was like, man, I'm in the doctor for eight hours. I'm trying to get out of here and just see Houston a little bit, enjoy it. Uh, this is a new home, something new for me. So I've been in a place in DC for 10 years. And uh, Friday we got on the court for the first time and me just walking out there and seeing he got the same color I got on and we're on the same team. Kind of brought back memories from when we was in college. And um, I know how hard he's working and what he's been through the last couple of years to try to get back to being at the Marcus County he was before and the last two years have been basically hell for me. So I know what I've been through also. So it was great. And uh, we both challenged each other. We said, while we're here and while we're teammates, we're going to challenge each other to get the best out of each other so we can have a heck of a season. Bridget Condon. Hey, John, um, I'm with the ABC station in Raleigh doing a story on you and Chris. And can, you turn, can you talk a little, excuse me, can you talk a little loud? I can't hear you. Sorry. Yeah. Is this better? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm with the ABC station in Raleigh doing a story with on you and, and Chris and PJ. Have you talked with them at all about you know what it means to come from the same area and is there an extra level of trust or teammate that you guys can just have that level of respect knowing knowing how you guys grew up and where you're from oh uh, no not really I haven't but you know what I mean like I tell people all the time PJ was that guy growing up where I'm from we both from Raleigh and um he was that guy that everybody looked up to you know what I mean going to Texas I mean going to Enloe High School and then going to Texas and then coming to the NBA we all was excited about that and that kind of gave us a lot of hope especially me being a young kid from North Carolina that was talented, but didn't know if I could make it out. And uh, to see a guy like that make it out is pretty dope. You know what I mean? Chris is from Winston-Salem, and to read his story and see the background of that, you also can go to Steph Curry and read his background of where he came from and what he'd been through. So it's all fun and excitement, and it's dope. I get the opportunity to play with a guy like PJ, and um, I know what he brings to the game and what he means to the organization and the team, and I think they all feel the same about me. Have you talked to Chris Clemens at all? And, like, do you think you could maybe be that guy for him? Uh, not really. Ain't talk too, I didn't really talk too much to him. You know what I mean? Having a practice with him today was fun. And uh, that's one of the guys, like, I watch all type of basketball. Girls, boys, if it's middle school, high school, if I can watch it, I'm watching. I love the game so much. And I watched him progress from being at Millbrook High School to going to camp. You know what I mean? So I watched all that. And it's great to see a guy like that come from Raleigh that nobody probably expected him to make it to the league anyway. And uh, put up the numbers he put up and then I have opportunity to be on an NBA team. You know I mean, that's dope. And uh, not even in the past, when you had Gary Clark here, you know, he's from North Carolina also. So to have that tradition of basketball players come from the area I come from means we open the door for a lot of people and we just want to keep opening that door. Chris Miller. J-Dub. <laughs> What's up, C-Mill? My guy. 
Um, you've had a couple of days to get down to Houston uh, to get yourself acclimated, being around people like Boogie and talking to James. But I want you to have this opportunity to finally say your final goodbyes uh, to people in D.C. where you've spent your entire career. What kind of message do you want to send to them as you get ready for this next chapter in your life? Uh, kind of, I mean, the message I posted on my Instagram and Twitter, I mean, uh, it's still, it's still feel surreal to me. You know what I mean, not to be in that, that building and be in that uniform and uh, be able to know where I'm going and driving a car and being to see certain places and certain things I used to do. Uh, I think I did it the best way I could is try to go say my goodbyes to everybody that showed my respect and supported me through my 10 years being there. Uh, like I said, June 25th, 2010, when I first got off that limo, and walked on the red carpet and walked into that, uh, it was the Verizon Center now, then, but now it's the Capital One Arena. I had chills. I was a skinny kid, 19 years old, with no facial hair, and, and didn't know where I was going in life. And uh, they watched me grow up and be this, this, this grown man that has two beautiful boys, that has a family at home. And uh, that's all I really can say. I love them. My heart is always going to be there. Um, the way I touch the fans, the way I touch the community, that still exists to this day, and it will exist to the day I'm off this earth. Um, I wish that whole team, the organization, the best of luck this year. Uh, but my main focus is with my new team, the Rockets, and what I'm trying to accomplish to come back and be an all-star player and be that player that everybody feel like I don't have no more. So I ain't saying a goodbye. I'm really just saying a thank you because I'll be back there. Joe Abdullah. Hey, John. Uh, kind of following up on Chris's question a little bit, Brad, talk to us a little bit about you coming back to the facility, saying your goodbyes. I guess, firstly, what made you decide to do that? Um, and secondly, what were some of the emotions of saying bye to Brad? Um, it, was, it was definitely tough. I mean, like, like Brad said, man, for so many years, everybody wanted to break us apart. And like I said before, outside of basketball, that's what our bond is. You know what I mean? Basketball is a great bond to have with somebody you call your brother. But it's way bigger than that, man. I told you the story when my mom passed, the way he couldn't even focus on the game against Charlotte. And right after that, he drove down to be with me. You know what I mean? Like, that speaks testimony of what our relationship was. And still to this day, people are going to still try to break it up. But we had a great eight years together. Um, and like I told him, I talked to him since I've been there. I told him I wish him the best. Go keep doing what you're doing. Lead that franchise now because you're that guy. You're that franchise guy. Uh, this is what the organization wanted. And I mean, I can't take that away from him because he's earned that. He's, he's one of those superstar players. And I'm still going to vouch for him no matter what. And um, that's what it is. Thanks, John. Good luck to you. Thank you. Saman Ali. Uh, John, you were once someone who was an all-defensive team guy. Coming off this injury, do you, see, do you see yourself getting back to that level? And do you see that as an area you, you can help this team? I'm coming back on all levels. That's all I'm going to say. So, yeah, I can help this team. <laughs> Jonathan Fagan. But John, having heard for years what DC meant to you, what you meant to DC, to decide that this was the right thing for you at this time of your career, if, if that is how you felt, what, what made this the right thing, knowing how much you had to leave behind to make a move? It wasn't never mine. You know what I mean? My heart and my soul was with that organization. Uh, the hard work and dedication and sacrifice I made the last two years was with that organization. My whole mindset was walking into coming back from Miami from working out in the summer to walk back to D get back to D.C. and prepare myself for a season. I never thought this would happen. Uh, it's a part of business. It's a part of life. Um, God threw his toughest battle to his strongest people. All I did was put the work in and left it in God's hands. And this is the, the next step he wanted for me and the chapter that he has for me. And all I can do as a young man is embrace this and move forward with life. Thank you. Jerome Solomon. Hey, John, man, welcome to Houston. Uh, a couple of things. One of them, real quick, how long or when, how long have you been back to 100%? <laughs> it's <in> like March, <laughs> right, right, before, right before the bubble hit. You know I mean, I was yeah. playing pickup, playing pickup with the Go Go, our Go Go team uh, in DC, mm -hmm. my GD team. And then I had the opportunity to practice with the team a little bit. And um, just the excitement I was bringing there was fun for me. And um, it was just a moment we played, uh, played like a three on three, four on four. And, uh, Golden State in the Bay Area, and I was doing certain things that I did before, and I was like, yeah, I'm back. <laughs> All right, cool. And you've played for several coaches in your career, I know. Um, what are your initial takeaway from meeting Steven Silas and being around him for a little bit, anyway? 
Um, it's great. It's, it's all new. You know what I mean? Like I said, this is everything is new to me. It's only my fourth day being in Houston, my fourth day being out of the place where I was for 10 years. Um, and I'm still just embracing it. You know what I mean, but the most important thing for me, I was excited about was to get through that, get on that court today and get through a training camp practice. I haven't done that in two years. And uh, that was fun. It was exciting. Um, he seemed like a heck of a coach, some guy that's straightforward, not going to sugarcoat it. Uh, he's telling us what he wants from us. And I'm, he's also let me be a leader out there in there reconstruct what I know and what I think is best for the team and what I've seen in my 11 years, 10 years, been in the league, going in my 11th year. And, uh, that's a fun thing to have when you have the opportunity to have a voice from day one. And that's what, what, that's what leadership is about. And that's something that I'm going to embrace. And that's something I'm trying to bring to this team. We'll take, we'll take two more. Uh, Ali Khan Bajani. Hey, John, uh, welcome to Houston. Um, in recent interviews you've done before the season while you're rehabbing, you mentioned improving as a three-level score, uh, primarily with pull-up threes and going to your right. Uh, how will that further elevate your game and allow you to better complement James? Um, just play basketball. You know what I mean? That's what I, one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to be John Wall no matter what when I get on that court. Uh, but at the same time, me being out and me just looking at how much longer I want to play and what I feel like I can improve on, I'm able to do certain things that I wasn't able to do before when I was injured and playing through certain things. So that's when I felt like my game was going to evolve because I'm finally healthy and don't have those little nagging injuries that was dealing, I was dealing with over the last six or seven years that people will finally get to see at some point uh, what I was playing through and what I was going through. And to be doing what I was doing on one leg, basically, lets me know how special I am. And last question, Brian T. Smith. Hey, John, having spent uh, your career in the Eastern Conference, uh, you know, out of all the changes that you're dealing with, one of those is changing over to the West with the Lakers and the Clippers and the Nuggets and all these you know, contending teams. What, what's that like to, to change conferences, have everything else going on, but knowing that you're joining a team that's, you know, not just trying to make the playoffs, but trying to take the next level and being part of that in the Western Conference? Um, it's, um, definitely, it's definitely fun. Um, we know how competitive the Western Conference has been for years. But the Eastern Conference have gotten better too at the same time. But uh, it's just simple as this. Like, I'm used to seeing those guys two times. They used to seeing me two times. Yeah, I got to see you four times. Now you got to see me four times. So lace your boots up and get to it. That's all we can do. Thank you, John. All right, thank y'all. Y'all have a great day.